All right, thank you very much, Margie. And uh, good afternoon, everybody. And thank you uh, for joining me today as we kind of walk through an introduction to the ArcGIS Pro SDK, or uh, also known as the Software Development Kit. And um, as Margie said, my name is Matt Barra, and I'm a solution engineer that works out of the DC Regional Office. And one of my main focus areas is the Esri Developer APIs and SDKs. So for the next hour or so, uh, here's kind of the list of what we're gonna be sort of covering today. Uh, we're gonna start with an overview of the ArcGIS for Developers program. And if you attended the JavaScript webinar two weeks ago, one of the things you're gonna notice is that the way that we access information about the Pro SDK is a little bit different than the way that we access it for most of the other developer technologies. Uh, next after that, we'll dig uh, into the development capabilities that are available within the SDK. As a part of that, I'll demonstrate uh, the four types of solutions that you can create with the, uh, using the Pro SDK. After that, we're gonna focus on the development process and discuss how the SDK works with Microsoft Visual Studio. Uh, that's gonna include taking a look at a bit of code and we'll kind of walk through the process of creating an application. Uh, and after that, we're actually gonna create a simple add-in tool that's gonna allow us to draw a box on the map and return coordinates uh, in the extent of that box to a message box. And then finally, I'll show you some additional online resources that you can use to quickly get started working with the Pro SDK. About halfway through, I'll pause and take some questions, and then I'll also as well. And if I don't get to all of them before the end of the hour, I'll stay on the chat afterwards and I'll answer anything additional then. So to begin, I think everyone should already be pretty familiar with the concept uh, on this slide. It basically depicts the overall Esri platform and shows how everything works together in a seamless way. And this is important to emphasize because even though today we're focusing on developing solutions specifically for Pro, the solutions you create can easily leverage the other components of the platform. So for example, you could write a tool using the Pro SDK that allows you to update the information that manipulates the display of a map that lives within an app you created with the JavaScript API. So everything in here kind of works together seamlessly. As far as the developer SDKs and APIs go, they can basically be broken down into four main categories. Uh, and as you can see on this slide, the Pro SDK falls under the list of platform technologies. The platform technologies are sort of unique uh, when it comes to the Esri developer tools. So instead of focusing on a specific programming language or a specific development environment, they focus on a specific part of the software. And because of that, that's where it can get a little bit confusing. All four of the technologies that you see highlighted on this slide are created by using Microsoft Visual Studio and the .NET framework. But it's really important to remember that even though they are all created by using the same development environment, they're completely separate SDKs, which are not installed in the same way, not kind of used in the same way. So to load the .NET SDK, you have to download the extension from the ArcGIS for Developers Console. Since today we're focused on the Pro SDK, you'll be happy to know that that's much, much easier to do. You actually just load it directly within Visual Studio itself, and I'll demonstrate how we do that uh, in a bit. Another difference between the SDKs is where you actually go to find help documents. Uh, most of the developer technolo technologies have all of their API references and samples listed on the developers.arcgis.com website, uh, but the platform, tech, the platform SDKs are a little bit different. So their documentation is gonna be located on the page that's associated with the technology that they support. So if you want information on the Pro SDK, it's not gonna be located most of it's not going to be located on the developers.arcgis.com site. It's going to be located on the ArcGIS Pro page. Um, that being said, there are still some resources that are on the developers page that you should be aware of as well. So I'll kind of walk through all of that right now. So first, I'd like to show you where we actually go to get to the Pro SDK. We'll begin by just going to the ArcGIS Pro website. You can see this is the traditional page that talks about everything with ArcGIS Pro. But on the top of the screen, we've got these five tabs. And on the far right, you're gonna see that we've got this one labeled the SDK. And this is probably the most important place for you to, to know about, um, to be able to access in order to actually start working with uh, the SDK. A few important things on this page, you'll notice right here, we've got a link to the API reference. 
So if you want to learn how to do something very specific, if you want to learn how to use a certain API command, this is where you can go to do it. And right next to that are the community samples. This is important too, because you'll see that we've got actually hundreds of different samples that are out of the studio and manipulate uh, to start working with some code. And if I click on that, it's going to open up the GitHub repository. So in order to work with these samples, the easiest way to do this is to come in here and actually click right here and download all of these as a zip file. And then you can take that zip file, extract it on your own machine, and you don't have access to the hundreds of samples that we have out there. And, and I'll actually show you. So I mentioned that a lot of things, that a lot of the information about the Pro SDK is not available on uh, traditional developer at ArcGIS.com website. And that's true. So if you come in here, you actually won't see it listed under here as one of the uh, one of the APIs because it's found on the, that page. But it, there, this is still an important page to go and visit because if you come here and you click on start building your app, if you scroll down, you'll see that we have all these labs that have been sort of populated in here that are all from about 10 to 20 minutes long to kind of get you started with every one of our technologies. In here, you'll notice that we have a little link for Pro SDK. And from here, you can get all the tutorials that you could possibly need in order to kind of really start working with the PK. So those are important places to remember that if you need access to the A resources, that's on the traditional ArcGIS Pro uh, homepage. If you want access to all the sample data and sample scripts, that's all gonna be available inside of GitHub. And if you want access to the labs, that's going to be found inside the developers.arcgis.com page. And all of this will be provided at the end. Uh, Margie is going to send out the slides and everybody will have links to these inside of that. So now that you've seen where you can actually go for documentation and resources, let's talk about what you can actually do with the SDK. Uh, as you're going to see in our first demo, it's really pretty powerful. Uh, you have total control over what you want to do with regards to building custom GUIs and interacting with data and maps uh, and working with kind of outside APIs and tools. But having access to all those capabilities also does come with additional requirements. And first of all, you need to have access to Microsoft Visual Studio. And second, .NET development definitely has a steeper learning curve uh, kind of associated with, them, uh, associated with it as opposed to using maybe another language like Python or something like that. Uh, so before you begin any project, the first question you should ask yourself is, do I even need to be using the Pro SDK to meet the requirements of, uh, of my project? Because when it comes to ArcGIS Pro, there are basically three different ways that you can extend the platform. When possible, we always suggest that you start with configuration and kind of work your way up to development uh, only if it's absolutely necessary. Because as you move up on the list, on this list here on the left, um, you're going to see that there tends to be less individuals that kind of have that expertise. So if you have someone on your team that developed a great tool using the Pro SDK and they leave the organization, it's usually a lot more difficult to find another individual that can troubleshoot the code if it needs to be updated. So that's why when it comes to extending ArcGIS Pro, the easiest and quickest way to do it is to just try to configure your application. So if you want to do this, you know, in the settings, it's very easy to add and move tools and to change kind of the layout of your ribbon. If you have specific workflows that you want your users to do, you can share, uh, you can build and share what's called tasks. If you haven't used tasks before, uh, it's a pretty cool concept. It allows you to build step-by-step -step directions to kind of sim simplify a process uh, for your users. And the best part is, is that neither of these two things require you to write any code. The next way to extend ArcGIS Pro is through automation. This can be done by creating models in Model Builder or through custom scripts with Python. What's great about these methods is that they're portable and easy to share with other users. They're also really easy to debug. And most importantly, they don't require any additional software. So for those of you that are brand new to programming and kind of want to learn your first language, I highly, re highly recommend checking out Python. Within ArcGIS Pro, it's not quite as robust as .NET uh, is, but it is tremendously powerful, much easier to learn, uh, and you can use it throughout the platform. 
the final way to extend ArcGIS Pro, and the one that we're going to be focusing on for the rest of our seminar today, is to develop your own custom solutions with the Pro SDK. Uh, as mentioned before, you know, this method gives you the most flexibility, but also is the most difficult and typically also the most time consuming. So one caveat uh, before you start developing with the Pro SDK is you might wanna check with your IT folks to make sure that you're actually allowed to do this. Uh, you know, because in addition to requiring Microsoft Visual Studio to be installed on your workstation, you may run into another issue as well, because unlike a Python script, which is really nothing more than a text file, the output from a Pro SDK project is actually a, a small piece of software. So you wanna make sure that you can actually use it before you spend a whole bunch of time creating and going through the process. So now that you've decided that the Pro SDK is the best choice for your project, what can you actually do with it? So currently, there are four separate patterns of development. So basically four different kinds of tools that you can create using the Pro SDK. Uh, and if after we kind of go through each one of these, you can think of another pattern that you might need that's kind of fits one of your requirements, you can always feel free to submit those uh, at ideas.arcgis.com. So that's a great resource to be able to use to get more features added onto, um, onto our platform. So the first pattern you can develop is an add-in. And this is probably the most common use of the Pro SDK. Uh, it basically allows you to create your own custom tools and toolbars. And the most common question that I often get asked when talking about developing add-ins is, if I can create a tool for my toolbox by using Python, why would I have to use the Pro SDK to create an add-in? And there's several reasons, and they relate to different use cases, but really the most common reason I see is because it allows you to fully customize the GUI, the graphical user interface. You know, in the first demo, you're gonna see an example of a tool uh, with a custom interface that not only interacts with the map, but actually gets a response from the map that it then uses to update the GUI. And so one of the other differences you may notice between ArcMap and ArcGIS Pro is that the Python add-ins, they no longer exist within Pro. So if you have an existing Python add-in that you've been using inside of ArcMap uh, and you can't migrate it to a geoprocessing script, then building an add-in with the Pro SDK is probably gonna be your best option. The next pattern of development is solution configurations. If you've previously used ArcGIS for intelligence or also formerly known as ICAP, it was entirely developed kind of using the Pro SDK. What solution configurations allow you to do is sort of fully customize the user interface for the entire program. So you can add a custom splash screen, a custom start page, you can load custom data by default, you can customize the ribbon and the tools that users see. You can really pretty much take ArcGIS Pro and set it up to match the branding of your organization. So a good reason that someone might want to create a solution configuration might be if you have users that aren't GIS experts, uh, but they need to access certain tools and workflows, you can then create a specific tool just for them to use. And uh, in the demo in a few minutes, you're actually going to see a fictitious configuration uh, that we set up that, that supports military combatant commands. The third pattern is plug-in data sources. This allows you to create tools that take sources of information that don't directly work with Pro out of the box and analyze them and use them as read-only feature classes or tables. So if you have a user that needs to connect information that's stored in a MySQL database or a SharePoint list or another format that might get updated regularly, um, this might end up being a good option for you. So what it does is actually streams the data directly from the source instead of actually creating that data set on the disk, but it allows you to interact with that streaming data as if it was a data set that resided on the disk. And when you get to the demo, I'll show you an example where I'm streaming a feature class directly from a CSV. And if I have users that are going in and updating that CSV, uh, when I hit this button, it's gonna refresh and re-pull in all that data without having to actually create a new feature uh, service out of it. The final pattern of development is core host. And this pattern allows you to build standalone applications on top of ArcGIS Pro. And, and really that last part is really, really important. You know, to use a core host app, your user must have ArcGIS Pro installed on their computer. If you wanted to create a standalone application that doesn't rely on Pro, 
Uh, you can actually still do that, but instead of the pro SDK, you would probably want to use the .NET SDK. Uh, and that's going to give you as access to the ability to be able to create WPF, uh, UWP, Android, iOS, and Xamarin-based apps. So they won't require ArcGIS Pro, but they will require a runtime license. So for this demo, I'll show you a simple application that allows you to access the attributes of feature classes uh, within a geo database in its own kind of custom uh, interface. So now we've talked about the four patterns of development for the Pro SDK. Next, I'll show you an example of each one. So the first two are gonna be an add-in and a plug-in data source. And both of these are gonna be tools that reside uh, within ArcGIS Pro uh, under the add-in tab. And then after that, I'll show you a, a solution configuration and a core host, which both require ArcGIS Pro, but again, they're run as standalone applications. So to begin, let's look inside of ArcGIS Pro. One of the things you'll notice um, is that if you have an add-in, if you're gonna create a special tool, it's gonna actually need a place to reside on the ribbon. And by default, if you don't create a brand new ribbon up top, it's gonna add your add-in inside of this new add-in ribbon. So inside here, you can see we have two different tools. So we have one, which is this first tool is view webcams, and this is gonna be uh, an example of an add-in that was created. This next one is going to be these add CSVs to a map. And what this is going to be is an example of that data plugin. So the view webcams, uh, when I click on this, it's going to actually do things. It's going to open up a brand new GUI. And it's going to be a very customized GUI that was developed uh, completely using uh, the .NET framework in order to design the way it looks. And then what it's going to do is it's going to take the bounding box of the map and it's going to pass that information out to an external API. That external API is then going to use those bounding box to find four webcams, kind of randomly four webcams that exist within that bounding box. Then it's gonna draw them on our map. Then it's also gonna pass that information back to the GUI too, so we actually see those webcams. So let's see what that looks like when we actually do it. It's a little cold here in DC, so I'm gonna zoom down into South Florida to see if there's any good South Florida webcams. And if I click on view webcams, it's going to plot of all, art of all, of, all of our webcams on our map, and it's also going to drop those inside of our GUI. So we can see that our GUI first interacted with our website or with our map, then sent that information to a website, and then the information that it received from the website, it used inside of the GUI itself, and then also on the map. So as I do this, I can also sort of zoom around to a new location. And if I hit the button again, it's gonna relaunch with updated information. So this is an example of an add-in. So you couldn't do something like this uh, just strictly with Python. You could do something maybe similar. You could maybe have something that goes out and hits the API and then plots those locations on your map. But the key here is that you've actually got this GUI and this GUI is also interacting with the map uh, and with that API as well. So it just gives you more flexibility in the kind of tools that you can create and deliver to customers. So the next thing we have on our map is the add CSVs to map button. And first on here, I kind of want to show you exactly what one of these CSVs looks like that I'm pulling from. So this is the Excel or the uh, CSV document that I have. You can see there's not a lot to it. I've got some X, some X data, some Y data, uh, and the name of a location. So when I press this, what this is gonna do is actually load this information as a feature class inside of my map here. So what's making this unique and how this is a little bit different than if you just bring this in and convert to XY is that this information, this feature class has not been created anywhere. So when I come in here and I look at the source, you'll notice that it's actually putting the location as my plugin data source. So what it's really doing is it's kind of refreshing. If I go in and I add new information in here, I'm gonna be able to reload it using this button again, and it's gonna update inside of here. So what makes this different than, than anything else is that rather than using Python or taking a CSV, dragging it in and plotting the XY, all of this is being done in a streaming fashion. So this is what you can do when you're using a, creating a plugin data set.
So next, I'll show you an example of a solution configuration. And I want to start by actually showing you um, how we actually start up a solution configuration. Once your solution configuration is made, when you build it and save it out, it's actually going to build a brand new file that's going to live in your ArcGIS Pro directory. From that, what we can do One second, please. Let me just find find where it's at. Um. Okay. Let's move on to actually the core host, and then I'll explain the, uh, I'll explain the other one in a second. So a core host, again, makes a standalone application. So uh, in this case, it's gonna actually make uh, a dot application file, which you can actually see right here. This is what actually is the, the outcome of creating one of these. And if I double click it, in this case, it's actually opening up a brand new tool that was completely created using the GUI inside of .NET. From here, I can come in, I can browse the location of a geodatabase. I can then open it. And then I can actually come in here and search for different uh, for different feature classes, and then I actually read the attributes. Of them. So this is a special tool. It, it doesn't run inside of ArcGIS Pro, but it allows you to actually use features from ArcGIS Pro inside of a standalone tool. So for the solution configuration, what it does is actually create a brand new uh, a brand new shortcut to open up your application. And when that happens, you're actually gonna notice that we actually have a different splash screen and a different uh, login screen than what traditionally gets launched. Unfortunately, it has disappeared and I can't find it, uh, but I will pull up an example of this after we kind of get through some things a little bit later. Um, and uh, I'll show you an example of exactly what that looks like. But at that time, since, since we've kind of gone through kind of what the capabilities are by using the SDK, uh, I want to open it up. Does anybody have any questions about what's kind of in the realm of possibility with what you can do with the Pro SDK? Yeah, so as we wait for people to kind of type in those questions, um, we did have a question about um, Visual Studio Community um, and whether or not the SDK requires the full version or if it works with Community. Yeah, and I'll actually get into that a little bit later, um, some of the specifics with Visual Studio. But uh, yes, it absolutely will work with Visual Studio Community. Great. Um, another question. Is it possible to develop something that streams from a file directly into AGOL? Uh, directly into AGOL? Uh, yes, there, there are definitely ways to do it. Um, one of the things to take a look at, we're not really going to be talking about it uh, today, um, but you can definitely do it with things like GeoEvent. There's several ways that we can do it. If somebody has kind of more a more specific use case that they want to talk about, um, feel free to hit me up afterwards or we can definitely talk about it. Great, those are the questions for now. Okay, great. And as you were asking those, uh, what popped up was actually our, our solution configuration. So I'll show you this before we kind of move on to the next part of uh, our presentation. Uh, one of the things you notice, we have a shortcut here. So this is a solution configuration. Uh, and if I right click on it and I go down to properties, you'll see that the target of this shortcut actually is our installation of ArcGIS Pro. One of the things you'll notice is at the end, 
it's got this extra little part on here that says config DOD solution configuration. So what this is letting, our, letting this shortcut know is that I want to open up ArcGIS Pro, but I want to do it with my special solution configuration that I created. So when I double click this, you're going to notice that we've got this custom splash screen that pops up instead of the traditional ArcGIS Pro splash screen. You'll also notice that once it pops up to the beginning, it's going to have a different start page. In this case, we've got a start page where we can select a dis, uh, specific template. In this case, I'm going to select the AFRICOM template. And then you'll notice that when it actually opens up, it's doing a couple different things. One, in this case, it's actually creating and saving a file. So instead of opening it up as a blank file, it's actually creating and saving one with the today's date and information. It's opening up a file that has very specific tools in it. You'll notice that I removed other, other toolbars because I might not want people to have access to that if they don't know what they're doing with them. And I also loaded a whole bunch of data directly out of the box. So this is a great, uh, a great solution that you might consider using if you've got people who are non-geospatial non professionals who need access to some of the tools uh, that live inside of here. All right. So now that you've seen kind of some examples of the four different things that you can do with the Pro SDK, let's talk about how you can actually make them. Uh, and you can do that by using Microsoft Visual Studio. So Visual Studio is an integrated development environment, an IDE uh, that was created by Microsoft. It supports 36 different programming languages. Uh, and it does basically four things for you if you're developing uh, with our SDK. Uh, first, it lets you write code. Second, it's going to let you debug that code. Third, it's going to let you design your GUI or your, your, your user interface. Uh, and fourth, it's going to let you actually build and publish those solutions. So Visual Studio, as mentioned before, comes in three different flavors, three different editions. Um, there's a community edition which is free as long as you're using it for training open source users or for individual developers. And then along with that, there's the professional and the enterprise editions as well. They'll give you a little bit more capabilities. But for our purposes, it really doesn't matter which version you're working with. All of them fully support the Pro SDK, uh, as well as the other ArcGIS for developer technologies that kind of run within the .NET framework as well. So you can also use Visual Studio if you're doing .NET development, if you're doing uh, really anything that has to do with our SDKs with .NET. So as I mentioned on the last slide, Visual Studio supports 36 different languages. Uh, but to work with Pro, the Pro SDK, you're going to be using either C Sharp or Visual Basic. And which one you pick to, to code with is you know, entirely up to you. Uh, but if possible, I would highly suggest choosing C Sharp if you can. Uh, you know, I did a simple search on a job search engine yesterday. And they had over 10 times as many postings looking for C Sharp developers than they did for uh, bb.net developers. But more importantly, all of our sample code is available in C Sharp. For Visual Basic, we only have a kind of a, a subset of the samples that are actually available. Uh, you know, and just for full disclosure, the first pro, pro programming language that I ever learned was actually Visual Basic, uh, and I really liked it. But if you decide to make the switch to C Sharp, I think you're going to be very glad that you did because it definitely makes developing with the Pro SDK a little bit easier. So once you have the Visual Studio uploaded uh, and downloaded and it's ready to go, uh, the first thing you need to do is actually install the Pro SDK. And like I mentioned earlier, one of the great things about this SDK is compared to some of the other ones, uh, this one's a lot easier to install because you don't need to actually download it from ArcGIS for developers from the website. You can, you can load it directly within Visual Studio. So all you actually need to do is to go to your Tools tab and then click on Extensions and Updates and then click on online and search for ArcGIS. You'll see a few options pop up, but if you click on and download the ArcGIS Pro SDK for .NET, you should be good to go and you can just start developing right away. Um, once you actually start developing a tool or an application and you build it and run it, one of the best features about Visual Studio is 
is that it's going to automatically install itself into your version of ArcGIS Pro and then run the application directly in Pro. So you can actually test it live inside of uh, your instance of Pro. Next, I want to quickly touch on the kinds of items that you're going to have access to once you install the SDK. So creating a tool can go beyond just adding a button to the toolbar. Out of the box, you're going to have access to a lot of template items that can easily be added into your project. This can include things like dock panes and menus and construction tools and a, and a whole bunch more. And adding one of these to your project is extremely easy. All you actually need to do is right click on the solution name and select add and then new items. Then you're going to see uh, all these tools actually just pop up as options. And you actually see an example of this when we create a map tool uh, in the next demo. So I want to take a little bit of time and kind of walk you through the basic parts of the Pro SDK project. And for this example, we're going to take a look at an add-in. So when you first open up Visual Studio and you go and you add a new project and you select ArcGIS Pro module add-in, a lot of files are kind of automatically generated and created and sort of thrown into your uh, project. Now you can actually see them here listed in the Solution Explorer, which is on the right side of your screen when you open Visual Studio or which is on your right side of the screen right here that you're taking a look at. Uh, first thing you probably notice is that if you look at the file tree, there are going to be two image folders. And that's because since ArcGIS Pro supports both a standard mode and a dark mode, it gives you the option to use different images that will match each display. Next, right above those, you'll see that we have a references file. This is going to be a list of all the external libraries that are used within your project. And then the final three files that you see there are two CS files and a DAML file. And I'll talk more about uh, those and exactly what they do on the next few slides. So let's start with the assembly info.cs file. So this file is going to provide a lot of the details about the construction of your app. Uh, as you can see, it, it lists lots of things like the title, the company, the copyright information. Uh, then at the bottom, you've got the option to kind of specify the version number of the application that you're developing. The way you can really think about the assembly info.cs file as is sort of the metadata file for your application. So all the metadata is that's going to reside, that's going to have all the things that you want users to know about your application. So next, we can take a look at the module1.cs file. And this is where the flow of your code kind of actually begins. So in the first 18 lines, uh, what it's basically doing is the script is importing all the libraries on this page that the, uh, that the code is going to be using. Uh, and by default, when you load a brand, new, a brand new application and you go in to edit it, all these libraries are already going to be sort of loaded in there. The ones that you see highlighted in white, those are ones that are actually being used by the code below. And as you use other libraries in here, um, those other libraries will change from gray to white if you're using them. Uh, there's also you can add more libraries if you need to, to access different ones for your code as well. But the most important part of the script on this page is going to be down at line 33. And this is where we are using find module to connect the code to our last file, which is going to be the demo file. The demo file actually defines how your application is displayed. So um, you know, if, you, if you have experience as a web developer, the demo file is going to be like your HTML, or the CSS file is going to be more like your JavaScript. Um, or if you're an, an Android developer, it would be like the XML you know, that works with your Java. So this is the location where you can actually go in and customize the tabs, groups, buttons, and the other items that exist within your application. So when you add an item like a button to your app, it's going to show up here in the demo file. At the same time, it's also going to create a brand new CS file. That CS file is where you're going to go in and actually write the code that creates the action that happens when the button is pressed. So next, I'm going to show you two demonstrations. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is actually create a very, very simple add-in from scratch. It's going to be a web tool that goes out and queries uh, a box for its extents and then passes that information back to the user via a message box. The next, I'll show you how to build an actual uh, app from an existing sample. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up uh, Visual Studio. Uh, you can use Visual Studio 2017 or 2019. Both work with all of our SDKs uh, and APIs. 
But when we first open it up, if you haven't actually loaded the SDK yet, I do want to show you how easy it is to do. All you've got to do is actually come up to tools, click on extensions and updates, select online, and then search for ArcGIS. And then right here, the first thing that pops up should be the ArcGIS Pro SDK for .NET. If you click on that, there'll be, uh, if you haven't downloaded yet, there'll be a little button down here that says download. Once you select that, it'll run, it'll download, and you'll be ready to start developing your first application. After you do that, to make, to make a quick app, what you can do is actually come up to file and say new project. From here, you'll see all the different things that you have access to inside of Visual Studio. But for our purposes, we're going to want to come down here and click on, click on this ArcGIS right here. And then you're going to see that that's going to list those four different patterns that we have uh, of tools that we can create inside of uh, the Pro SDK kind of listed here in the middle. For our case, in this instance, we're going to build an add-in. So I'm just going to select add-in. I'm going to give it a new name and hit OK. Automatically, what it's doing is it's creating that new project. But we're going to see that the Solution Explorer is going to fill up with those files like that we saw uh, a few slides ago. We're going to have our module one. We're going to have our assembly info. We're going to have our DAML file and then our dark images, our regular images, and our references. You'll see if we open up one of these images files, it's going to have these are the, the icons and JPEGs and PNGs that we're actually going to be able to use inside of our uh, inside of our application. And this is what these are putting in here are actually some default images. Those images are, are going to be used uh, in order to actually create the, the um, icons for our files. So once I come in here, uh, I can click through and I can see everything. But one of the things I want to do if I want to add a new button, because in this case, I want to add a new button that opens up a tool, I'm just going to right click on new add in, and I'm going to say add, then say add new item. By default, it's going to show all the different kinds of items that sort of uh, live within our, our visual C sharp. But if I come down here and I click on ArcGIS, you'll see here's where I can come in and actually add specific items that relate specifically to um, the Pro SDK. For this example, I'm going to scroll down, but we're going to select uh, a Pro map tool. And we'll just hit add. What a map tool does is a little different than a button. When you click on a button, as soon as you click it, code's going to automatically run. What a map tool does, it allows me to click on a button, and it's going to turn my pointer into a tool because I can then do something with that on my map. So in this case, if we get down here past the libraries that we're importing, we can see what we're doing here is we're creating a rectangle on our, on our map. And down here, I can say, what I want to happen once I actually draw that rectangle. In this case, after we draw a rectangle, what we want it to do is actually take that bounding box of a re that rectangle and return it to us inside of a message box. To do that, I'm just gonna put some really simple code in there, just six lines of code. And you can see we're gonna be opening up and showing a new message box. And that message box is gonna do four things. It's gonna show us north, south, east, and west. And it's going to get the extent from the geometry of our box. And then it's going to pass that information as a string into our, our message box. So right here, we've actually just already created a simple map tool. The next thing I need to do, if I just come up here and I hit start, I can actually run this tool. And it's taking a second because it's actually building inside of, of our uh, application. And it's installing that add-in into my instance of ArcGIS Pro. And that's gonna launch a new version of it. And then if I come in and I open up a new map, You'll see that if I click on the add in tab, I now have this new tool on here called uh, Map Tool One. The reason that it's this generic name and this generic group and this generic button is I didn't go in and specify what I want any of that to look like. 
So if I click on here and I draw a box, it's going to automatically pop up and give me the coordinated extents uh, in, our map, in my map coordinates here. So if I go down here and I draw a box down here, it's going to give me that and it's going to pass it to me in my message box. So in the easiest way, that's a very, very simple application that we've just developed in a matter of seconds that actually goes in and that you interact with uh, the actual map itself. So next I wanna show you is actually how you can load uh, an, or create an application from an existing sample. So do that, first thing I'm gonna do is actually close this project. And then I kinda of wanna actually go back in. Let's take a look again at the GitHub repository. Inside here, remember we've got this place. If you wanna download all the samples, you can come in here and you can click here and actually download this as a zip file. Well, I did that a little bit earlier. I actually have all those residing here in my downloads folder. I'm just gonna quickly load. And when we open up that uh, application, open up that folder or that zip file, you're gonna see that inside we've got hundreds of folders. Each one of those is gonna be representing uh, a different project uh, that you can bring in as a sample. So what you can then do is come in and if you know that you wanna create a sample that has something to do with uh, the layouts, you can easily come in here and take these and actually just copy the whole entire folder. and just paste them somewhere in your local, your local uh, folders that you can then connect to. Uh, you know, in this case, I did a few of them a little bit earlier today. You can see one of the ones we did was this magnifier window. And if I double click inside this folder, you'll see that we've got a whole bunch of files inside. And some of them should look pretty familiar, our module one file, um, our, our demo file, everything's gonna be inside of here. But one thing you're gonna notice is we have this SLN file. This SLN is the, is the finished solution file. So this is what we can actually load inside of Visual Studio. So if I come back to Visual Studio, I can go here and I can select open file. And if I go to my magnifier window and I select magnifier window.sn, it's gonna automatically open up uh, the, the, all the files that I need in order to come in here and edit everything. So from here, because these are fully finished and compiled solutions, I can actually just come in here and run it. So if I click start, it'll come in and we can take a look at exactly, uh, exactly what the sample does. What this one does is it actually creates uh, a small window that you can place on top of your map that's gonna show uh, a zoomed in map of that location. So again, if we come in and we click in add in, I can click on magnifier. If I hover over Dallas, it'll actually show a, a zoomed in version of Dallas. I can kind of come down here to Houston. You can see it's got it zoomed in. So what if you want to actually want to come in here and edit this code? It's actually really easy to do. If I close this and I stop my debugger, since we know that the focus of that was a new control that was that, that, that magnifying window, to edit it, I can just come in here and I can look at the new item that was created when I added that item into my application. And if I scroll down here, you'll actually see all the code that's being used to actually run this application. So right here, you can actually see the camera scale. Right now, it's set at uh, a zoom factor of four. Uh, you know, if we wanted to double that, it's really easy to edit. All I have to do is just change it, hit save, we launch my application. And it's gonna recompile that app and reinstall that add-in inside of my ArcGIS Pro. This time, 
when we actually go in and we use the tool, you'll see that we're going to get different results. It's going to have our magnifying window zoomed in twice as far as it was before. We'll zoom into the United States. I'll select my magnifier. And I also will zoom in a lot further than we were before. So these are just some of the things that you can do by using the Pro SDK. Um, one final thing I wanna do kind of before we wrap up and get to more questions, I wanna provide you some of those useful links to those online resources. Uh, and again, in the next day or two, Marty is gonna be sending this information out as a PDF. So if anybody wants uh, access to these, you don't worry, you don't have to write these down, uh, it'll all be sent to you. Um, so this is where we can go to get inf more information. So with that, uh, I'll take any additional questions if anybody has any other questions I'd like to ask. Um, so we don't have any questions right now. Um, so feel free to type in any questions you might have into the questions section of GoToWebinar. Um, yeah, so Matt, I had never seen the SDK actually, and I, I'm impressed with how powerful it is. That was really good to see, really interesting. Yes, it is a very, it's one of the most powerful ways to be able to kind of customize what you can do with Pro. Yeah, the nice thing about if you do decide that you want to start using the Pro SDK in order to, to create uh, extensions or solution configurations or anything like that, nice things is, is we have other, since we do have other SDKs that also run on the same technology, if you wanted to translate what you learned from creating things with the Pro SDK into creating .NET tools, you can do that and the transition is going to be pretty seamless. That's kind of one of the real benefits of getting into the .NET SDK. Uh, we do have two questions. Okay. Um, we have questions about the Visual Studio Code. Um, can you explain a little bit more about that? Sure. So Visual Visual Studio Code um, is kind of a stripped down version of Visual, Stu of Visual Studio. Um, so unfortunately, Visual Studio Code uh, just won't work for, for developing uh, with the .NET SDK. It wasn't developed to do .NET applications. Uh, it's kind of like comparing Notepad to Microsoft Word. So where Visual Studio would be sort of Microsoft Word, uh, Visual Studio Code would be more like Notepad. Great. Um, one person asked if there were any books that you would like to recommend. Um, you know, there's a ton of great books that are out there, um, especially talking about .NET in particular. Uh, but one of the places I would probably start is actually just check out those labs that are on the beginning of uh, on the developers .arcgis.com, because uh, from there you're really going to get a get a feel for how the .NET SDK works. Or, or how .NET works specifically with the Esri SDKs. And then from there, you really branch out. There's tons of great options that are out there. Um, if you just go to your local library and look, you look at, or, or you go to a bookstore and you just look in the programming section, you're gonna see when it comes to .NET that there's gonna be a ton of different resources and they're all gonna be good. I would just make sure that the one that you're using uh, probably focuses on C Sharp instead of Visual Basic. Yeah, and I think one more question. Um, can you explain the add-in security levels and how you manage that when developing add-ins for your own organization to use? Um, can you be more specific about add-in security levels? So one of the things with, within organizations is because of the way the different IT groups set things up, 
Um, you know, some folks uh, may be able to just use any add-in they want and others are kind of tied down, but that's really going to be set based on your IT. You know, when, for ArcGIS Pro and for an add-in developed in Visual Studio, they're going to be designed out of the box to work together, um, you know, no matter what, but your IT might have additional uh, kind of restrictions that, that not, aren't necessarily the ones that Pro comes with out of the box. So for specific questions about security, you're probably going to want to talk to your IT folks. Okay, we have um, a follow-up comment by the same person. Uh, if you want the settings to be the highest level as we only, but is there a way to bypass that to allow your own organization add-ins to be available? Uh, that is a great question, but not one that I know off the top of my head. But, uh, Marty, if you can collect the information, I can look into that and I'll get back to them. Of course, we'll get back to you. All right, that's all the uh, preloaded questions we have. Um, we'll stick on the line a little bit longer just in case uh, someone thinks of anything. But we really do appreciate you spending your time to learn about this. Um, like Matt mentioned, I'll be putting together um, the links and the slides and the video um, and send that out when it's all ready. Um, thank you so much for spending your time with us and have a good day. Mm -hmm.